I am Flavia Belliani Zimmerman from the Australian Institute of International Affairs in Western Australia. And today we have with us Professor Mark Bisson from the University of Western Australia. And today we are going to be uh, discussing the, polit the politics of pandemics. Thank you for being with us, Mark. Pleasure. Mark, if you can please share with us, in your opinion, how COVID-19 might reshape world politics? Excellent question. The short answer is uh, nobody really knows, but uh, I think it's not unreasonable to think that things will be different uh, than they were before, because there's going to be huge impacts on the economy. There's going to be huge impact on some of the things people do privately, publicly, uh, and indeed on the way that uh, politics operates as well at the international level. And I think some of those things were already happening to some extent. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion about the relative power and authority of the United States versus China, for example. And I think the different responses in the United States and China to this pandemic will uh, give grist to the mill, as it were, as far as some people are concerned. Uh, in terms of thinking about the effectiveness of democratic leadership in the United States at the moment and authoritarian leadership in China at the moment. And uh, that's not to suggest that I think that Chinese authoritarian leadership is a good thing, but compared to what's going on in the United States at the moment, it does raise some pretty interesting questions. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Gibson. And um, if you can please um, explain to us how COVID-19 might expose signs of US weakness? Well, there's a couple of ways, I think, really. One is domestically, because uh, I don't think there's any doubt that of all the countries that have been affected, certainly in the wealthy industrialized world that has the capacity to do something about it, the United States has performed pretty poorly. It's got the highest infection rates in the world. It's got the highest death rates in the world. Uh, so, it's not been a good record and it's been marred by very ineffectual uh, and erratic leadership from Donald Trump in particular. But I think it also says something uh, not terribly flattering about the, the American political system more generally, in the sense that uh, it's remarkable that somebody like Donald Trump ever became uh, president in the first place. And uh, I think that's a bit of an indictment of the American system in some ways and possibly the American voters. But uh, for better or worse, uh, that's one of the things that's uh, been exposed by the crisis, I think. And people are, are making those kinds of comparisons about which countries are the most uh, effective and able to respond to these kinds of crises. And what is it about those countries that allows them to do so more effectively uh, in some ways than others? And I think these are really interesting and important questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Professor Bisson. And uh, in this regard, can you please explain to us if democracies are well equipped to deal with the current crisis? Um, yes and no, I think is the unsatisfactory answer to that question. Uh, some democracies uh, plainly are doing well. South Korea has been widely applauded, for example, for its very effective response to uh, the pandemic. Uh, so I don't think it's a question simply of one political system versus another, although clearly China's ability to be able to lock down entire cities of millions of people is something that stands apart from most democracies would find it difficult to do that as effectively, although uh, lots of countries are experimenting with that at the moment. Uh, but I think it's not a simple choice between democracy bad, authoritarianism good in, in explaining responses to this because there are plenty of fairly unpleasant uh, authoritarian regimes around the world that haven't responded very well uh, and there are plenty of authoritarian democracies uh, one that you would know quite well Flavia of course I mean Brazil hasn't covered itself in glory in its response to this uh, pandemic so it makes a difference who's leading a country uh, as much as anything else I think and when you get a leader that seems to understand the problem. Somebody like uh, Angela Merkel, for example, uh, who actually understands the science on what's going on and takes it seriously, then I think countries are much better placed to actually do something useful uh, and effective in responding to these crises and other countries that may have 
uh, at first glance, the infrastructure, the ability and the people to do something, but for one reason or another, generally bad leadership, uh, they haven't been able to rise to the challenge. Mm. Thank you so much, Professor Beeson. And wrapping up our interview, if you can please um, share some reflections regarding COVID-19 and the US and China's economic and political leverage in the world. How do you think it affects? Uh, well, I think there were, there were already doubts about America's uh, leadership and its commitment to the multilateral uh, institutions and international system that it helped to create uh, more than any other country. And I think Donald Trump's always been uh, very lukewarm about multilateral institutions and their effectiveness and the benefits that might accrue to the United States. I think he just doesn't get uh, what a big advantage that system has been for the United States in influencing international development. And uh, that's a bit of a problem for Donald Trump and it's a bit of a problem for uh, the United States. So there already were serious doubts about the effectiveness of American leadership in this place in the world. But I think what the, the crisis has done is that the absence of American leadership and the willingness to close down some of the admittedly not very well performing international institutions like the World Health Organization. I think those kinds of uh, actions have not gone down well with many other countries around the world, including some of uh, America's closest supporters. Uh, so that's been one problem. But on the other hand, uh, China has been ramping up uh, its response and its international response to the crisis as well, because China is now producing something like, I think it's 100 million face masks a day and exporting them around the world. And some countries are very pleased to get this kind of uh, material, particularly countries like Italy, uh, which has had a terrible crisis to deal with and is very grateful for the fact that China is able to supply these kinds of things in a way that they can't themselves and nobody else seems uh, willing to do for one reason or another. So people are now talking about uh, Chinese soft power again and talking particularly about uh, China's so-called face mask diplomacy and the possibility that uh, they can actually win friends and influence people uh, despite the way that they handled the initial uh, outbreak of the crisis which didn't uh, go down very well with the rest of the world when they tried to cover it up and pretend nothing was going on. I think since then they've responded pretty effectively and now see an opportunity, I think, to uh, garner more influence, particularly in the region, uh, with countries that are desperate for the kind of medical uh, facilities and, uh, and equipment that they are well placed to uh, provide, I think. Mm. Thank you so much, Professor Wiesen, for sitting down and talking to us. Um, for more information, please visit our website, www.internationalaffairs.org.au. Thank you. Thank you.